And hi everybody and welcome to Around the Ancient Eight. I'm Dan Loney. Glad to have you with us today. In this edition, we're going to be looking at women's basketball, previewing the games coming up this weekend. Joining us is Kevin Mooney, who is the Ivy League Digital Network correspondent covering the Cornell Big Red. Kevin, thanks for joining us. You're welcome, Dan. And the Cornell Big Red going into play this weekend with three wins. They also have Nia Marshall, who's been very good so far, with three Rookie of the Week honors. When you evaluate her play, how has she fit in to this Cornell Big Red roster to this point? She's added several things on offense and on defense. Uh, her, she has very long arms. It makes it very difficult uh, for opposing players to come down and try to get any kind of presence down low. Uh, players are having a hard time trying to get around her to the basket. She's got a great shot blocking presence. Uh, she's averaging over uh, one block per contest. Something that Cornell hasn't really had um, in a couple of years is that center like player that uh, is kind of an anchor under the hoop. Uh, but she brings a lot to the table on the offense as well. I mean, uh, you look at uh, the numbers that got her her most recent Ivy League Rookie of the Week award, which was just announced uh, earlier this week. And uh, she had um, her career high 21 points, eight rebounds against Howard back on the eighth. But the game that I like to look at, which gives you a glimpse as to how good she is all around, is uh, the game a couple of weeks or so ago against Vermont, the last uh, time the Red played at home, where she managed uh, 17 points, nine rebounds, four assists against one turnover. And uh, on top of all that, four blocks and four steals. I don't know that you can have a better all around game than that especially coming from a freshman uh, who's still learning the ropes, you know, and getting adjusted to the speed of uh, the college game. So uh, really she, she brings that to the table. And also what her presence has done is made life easier for Allison DeBagna, who's really one of the greatest players. And when, when the book is closed on her senior year this year, she will likely be regarded as uh, one of the, certainly at least one of the top five, if not top two or three players in Cornell Big Red women's basketball history. When all is said and done, she has a clear shot at being the number one rebounder on the all-time list to Cornell. But uh, the fact that she's averaging a double-double, Allison DeBagno, the last three games, shows you that teams are starting to game plan for Nia Marshall. Just like the last couple of years, opponents would game plan for Claire Fitzpatrick and leave Ali DeBagno all alone to sweep up the rebounds, get the second-chance points. Now teams earlier this season were starting to focus on DeBagno. And uh, now that Nia Marshall has been that added weapon to the offense, now teams are having a, a dilemma. Do they double-team uh, Marshall or do they double-team DeMagno? So either way, players, either player is taking advantage of, that, uh, of, of being on that man-to-man -man side on, that, on the offensive role. So then what do you really see as the keys for success for Cornell going forward this year? You know, the, one of the biggest keys Cornell has to treat every game like a playoff game and in reality it is because there is no postseason tournament as we all know in the Ivy League so every game is essentially a tournament contest and I uh, can't over can't afford to look any excuse me can't afford to overlook any of these games on the schedule for example uh, I mean Cornell kicks off the season against Columbia last season last time these two teams met uh Cornell was uh, nine and seven on the year, or nine and six, and Columbia was two and eleven, somewhere around there. Records are almost the same this season. Cornell at eight and six, uh, and Columbia at three and eleven this year. And last time these two teams played each other, it went to double overtime, and Cornell had to pull it out uh, down in Manhattan. So you throw the records out. And you got to take every minute of every game as uh, in that playoff-like atmosphere. Um, another thing, Cornell has to bring the intensity for that entire 40 minutes. Coach Smith has said, as uh, she looks back on the first half of the season, there have been times where she feels that the team has not brought that full game effort uh, to the table. And uh, uh, finally, you know, Dana Smith, when she played at Rhode Island, was one of the finest point guards. Um, in the NCAA in the late 90s when she played. And so the, the point guard, the guard position is always near and dear to her heart. And uh, she has implored uh, her guards to play better defense, especially on the perimeter. You look at the, the six losses that the Red have this season, teams are shooting 49% from beyond the arc. You look at the last three games where Cornell is undefeated 3-0, and 
they've held uh, opposing three-point shooters to 15%. I mean, that's been such a key uh, that perimeter defense has really fueled uh, their recent run of success. So I think those are really the, the main things that uh, Quinnell can focus on. And in their back pocket, know that they'll, they can uh, trust that they'll get that continued production from both Nia Marshall and uh, Allison DeBagno. The first weekend of Ivy League play, Princeton and Harvard flexing that muscle like they did much of last year. How did you read the first weekend of league play? Well, it's a, it's the same old, same old, uh, Dan, when it comes to Princeton. The Ivy League title, uh, you have to go through them virtually every single season in order, in order for you to stand a chance. Uh, and um, Blake uh, Dietrich is shooting the lights out so far this season, averaging 15 points, uh, 52% from the floor. 46% from beyond the arc. I mean, there's, there's no stopping uh, Dietrich so far this season. And, and uh, you look at Kristen Helmstetter, and those two have been such a, a tremendous one-two punch uh, for the Tigers already this season. And they're just going to be, again, right there. It's always been, it seems to be uh, Princeton and everyone else in the Ivy. Uh, and so far, at least you look at their you know 30-point win over Penn, which is certainly no slouch in the Ivy. Uh, the fact that they took them apart like that really says that we're in for another one of these seasons from the Tigers. Um, you know, Harvard pulling off the win over Dartmouth. I mean, another strong performance uh, from Temi Fagbenle, and she's quickly establishing herself as one of the elite players in the Ivy. Unanimous Rookie of the Year selection last year in the Ivy, and already has got three 20-plus games, 20-plus point games to her credit this season. She's going to be really tough to stop, and Harvard is going to give uh, – they're in position to really give Princeton a pretty good run for its money this year. Can't wait to see when those teams play. Can't wait till, uh, to see those Princeton, Princeton and Crimson uh, come into a Newman Arena as well to take on the Big Red. Be some good games. Kevin, thanks very much for joining us here on Around the H&H. No, you're welcome, Dan. Thank you. And don't forget, there's a full slate of games this weekend right here on the Ivy League Digital Network. And make sure that you check back Monday and Tuesday for complete weekend highlights. Thanks for joining us on Around the H&H.